Welcome to my mythic Imminar guide. Uh, this fight is the first, in in my opinion, the first really hard fight of uh, Mythic and Taurus. Um, it took us like two nights to uh, to get this down. So let's go ahead and take a look at the talents. Um, for row 99, I went with the Abyssal Strike. I think Razor Spikes would be pretty decent in this fight. You have a lot of pain, so maintain. Maintaining uh, demon spikes for damage wouldn't be too bad. Now keep in mind, um, you wouldn't want to keep demon spikes up all the time because you need it when you're actually tanking him. So that means that uh, when you're off tanking, you should not be using demon spikes. Therefore, you might not get full value out of razor spikes. Um, but I, I could see this working well. I use Fallout, Flame Crash, Fracture. Uh, concentrated Sigils, I probably had Chains equipped because I forgot to change it, but uh, Concentrated Sigils is better. Spear Bomb and Last Resort. Demon and Demonic Infusion could be decent. If you manage, if you learn to manage your Demon Spike uptime, um, it's actually not bad, so I'd recommend Last Resort. Now, this is also assuming you're using the Pants, Legendary Pants. If you don't have the Legendary Pants, then you might need Demonic Infusion. Soul Barrier could be okay on platform 2, but overall it's not really that good otherwise. So, Last Resort is highly recommended because there's a ton of burst damage. Demonic Confusion if you don't have pants and you don't die. Legendaries. Now for progression, I highly recommend using Archimonde's Hatred Reborn and uh, Oblivion's Embrace, the legs. Um, uptime of Demon Spikes is very important in this fight. I think it was like phase three. I forgot to have Demon Spikes up with three stacks and he white melee hit me for 7.1 million. So Demon Spikes uptime is really important. Other legendaries you can get away with. Um, Pride S would be okay. You're going to eat through that shield really quick. So it's not going to be that good. Um, Rune Master's Pauldron could be okay, not that great. Um, if you're looking for damage, now this is not progression. If you're looking for damage, you could go with Belt. Um, the Insignia could be good if you have good tier 2 talents, and that's strictly for damage. Otherwise, the other choices here aren't that great. The boots could be okay if you don't have anything better. But in single target, I don't like boots normally, but it could work. Other gear I used, I used uh, the Panthean Trinket. Um, unfortunately, I'm sort of stuck during progression using one of these trinkets if you have one. Either this one or uh, Amethyls, if you're lucky enough to get one. Um, I use 4-piece tier 21, only because of... Um, Honestly, because I use meta at certain breakpoints, and even though I didn't get a lot of um, meta cooldown based on the four piece, I did get something. So I used the four piece. Um, the two piece tier 20 would be really good in this fight as well because of the damage. Other than that, I just went with my highest eye level. And that is the gear breakdown. Um, consumables is always the same. Agility Flask, Agility Food, um, and your uh, Rune. We also used a, um, a uh, ch ch Versatility Rune for Antorus because this is our first skill, so we used one of those, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, Vantus Rune, that's right. So Vantus Rune. So that is uh, the setup, so let's go ahead and take a look at the fight. Oh, and also, I'm going to put a couple outtakes of a couple pulls at the end of the video if you're curious. I thought they were kind of funny, so... Alright, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the video. Alright, so here we are. Uh, for setup here, this isn't really complicated, it's actually quite easy. Um, what we do is we spread out the range and healers on the outside of the room, about 8 to 10 yards apart. Um, this part in this corner here should be empty for sleep canisters. On the bridge, we mark one side, and this is crucial. We blow up all the bombs on one side, always the same size, so there's no confusion. Uh, it might not be the best side to do, but if we always do the same side, people know where they're going. So we always do this, this right side here. That's what, where the marker is. Um, and the pull, I just keep him where he's at, just jump and spin him. 
Um, the phase uh, transition happens every 20%. So I'm going to start and do my normal rotation. Uh, I want to point out that I did delay my meta and my Archimonds Hatred Reborn for about 6-7 seconds. Uh, the reasoning is is I want him to break my shield for maximum damage, but he needs a little build up time. Uh, he needs um, some of his, uh, his shot glances. So I delay my meta and my AHR so you can break my shield. Uh, we switch at 4 if this does not cleave so you and the ult tank can stack up. And you can see the position here, how the healers and range are spread out. And over here is clear, that's where the melee goes with the uh, canisters. The shot glance uh, increases the melee damage you take by quite a bit per stack, so um, you need to have demon spikes up from two stacks to four stacks. And, and I want to point out here that um, it's important, turn this down a little bit too, um, it, it's important to keep up demon spikes almost the entire time you're tanking at every phase. So at this point, I'm not tanking, so I let my demon spikes recharge. Uh, when you have meta up, you don't need demon spikes most of the time. So when you have meta on, don't use demon spikes because you want that to recharge. So I'm going to taunt four. And I'm doing my normal rotation here. So, I want to point out here, uh, we're clearing this right side, and I mean all the bombs on the right side. These uh, knockback bombs, we need everybody trailing behind us. We're going to run into them one at a time, and knocking ourselves directly backwards. Um, so you can watch that our tank hit it. Now, Demon Hunter might be one of the best tanks for this fight. One of, not necessarily the best, but one of the best. And here's why. I can break as many of these stun traps as I can jump over with Infernal Strike. So the whole idea is I'm always going to be the one who breaks the stun traps. So I position myself, I'm going to leap over these two and pop both of those. Now this one over here, we're never running up the side so it can stay in the spot. So I ask for a dispel and watch how we break these, these bombs up the right side. Uh, it doesn't have to be tanks that do this by the way. And that we always try to keep it to two stacks and what I'm going to try here is to jump over these two bombs. And I'm gonna ask for a dispel, get away from that rolling bomb. Let's get some of these other bombs down. And I'm gonna get rid of these two stun traps. Now somebody should hit this bomb too because you don't want this bomb up. So what I'm going to do here, if you look, as yeah, see you broke that bomb, is I'm going to look to see where everybody is on this bridge. Once everybody is about halfway, you want to interrupt the boss. Now keep in mind that the people on the bridge will be taking more damage uh, because of the missiles if you're not on the platform. No. It's important because to interrupt them now, the flagration damage goes away, the orb stops spawning, and the wind disappears because there's wind pushing you around. And without the wind, everybody on the bridge can rush it and get over here quick because this entire lane is clear. As you can see, there's no bombs over here. This is what you want. So they're going to rush up here now. So I'm going to interrupt them. And you can see people trailing now. So if you're a healer, you should be over here ready to heal anybody that's coming across. Now, uh, there's this bomb debuff that four people have. You stay out of the group, away from everybody. And I didn't show this in the video. Uh, the reason why we have people trailing is because there's this bomb debuff. And it explodes around you, knocking people around. So they have to run behind everybody else um, in a uh, sequential order. So the first bomb, then the second, then the third. If they run on top of each other, they knock each other around. So there's always four people trailing in the back. And you can see that bomb right here in the bomb. The healer over here has it as well. Now in this phase, if you don't have the bomb, everybody groups up be in melee range. So charge blast is coming. Uh, what they need to do is look to see which spaceship is shooting them. And have it so they shoot the um, 
uh, the beam across the platform like this, where my mouse is going back and forth. So you're going to shoot the beam this way, back here, or over here. You don't shoot it through the middle, so over here, or over here. Everybody else that does not have the debuff stays in melee range. So what's going to happen is we taunt at two severs, and then when the off tank always blows up the bombs in melee. So here's the bombs, he taunts, and I'll run over him. Now I have three bomb debuffs and two severs. At this point, I don't need demon spikes up. They can heal me through it just fine. Um, I use one anyways, because why not? Now here's the most amount of damage you're going to take. is when you're tanking the boss, you have three to four bomb debuffs, and you still have two severs. So right here, you have to have demon spikes up. Now, um, at this point, I have no other cooldowns. Meta is 20 seconds. Uh, Fiery Brand is 30 seconds. And uh, Archimonde's Hatred Reborn is down. So I have to make sure I have Diva Spikes up the entire time. And at two uh, debuffs, he's going to talk. And the bombs are now wearing off. So I look for the next set of bombs, and I go break those. So transition happens at 60%. I know that uh, I'm going to talk here in a second. And I'm going to have Fabry Brand up for this one. And that's all I should need. So I'm going to taunt his Fabry Brand and make sure I don't die here. And that's good. So how are we going to do this here? Um, we stack everybody up. First off, we look. We wait for these charge beams to go off. So we don't start this until this is done. So they're going to cast. And everybody groups up here. Now this next mechanic... Um, is the best if you use a Havoc Demon Hunter. I, rugs would probably work and other classes could work, but Havoc works really well. So basically what he's going to do is we're going to bop him. He's, he's going to use Nether Walk and a Sky Step Potion. And what he's going to do is he's going to run over all the bombs on the left hand side and all the trip wires. And we're going to put down all our healing cooldowns here to keep everybody alive as he clears the path. So, so I call for a group up. We pop all our CDs, he gets a bop, he missed this bomb here, but that's alright. And just watch him go, look how fast he is. He pops all of those, and look at this path he just cleared for us. And our healing uh, cooldowns keeps us alive. So at this point, we just move. And he dies, he's guaranteed to die. Now, if you have an ancestral, uh, ancestral totem, you can res him if you can make it back. But most of the time, we don't have it, or we didn't use it. Um, so he's going to die over here by the boss. But we have this clear path now to get across. So that's why we, you have to pick the same side. Because we, if the stun trap is here and he hits the stun trap, he's going to get stunned. And then he's going to die and not clear a path. Which is why we break all the stuns and all the knockbacks. That way, the only thing on the, on the side is going to be the um, fire bombs and the tripwires. Because if he runs into a green bomb... Even with all the stuff on him, he's still going to be knocked back. Now I'm going to hit this, so that's out of the way for the next crossing. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look. They're about halfway, so I'm going to interrupt. And now, this is phase one positions. This, the hardest part of this fight is platform two and platform three. Platform one, four, and five are actually pretty easy. So this is platform 3, so what we're going to do is bloodlust in platform 3, everybody will be alive. And we want to get them out of this phase as quickly as possible. So this is phase 1 positioning, phase 1 mechanics, Four, with three, bombs. Two, one. So this is all phase 1, besides uh, bombs. So just like phase 1, by the way, demon spikes up always after 2 stacks, or you're going to die. So... Same thing, when I get 4 stacks, he's going to taunt, and I'm going to blow up the mines. So I'm going to blow up those mines, and keep in mind the ones out here really don't have to be popped. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but as long as they're not in the way, they're fine. Uh, this area over here, by the way, is Sleep Canister, or over here if there's nobody there. One. 
So I'm going to taunt, he's going to blow up the mines, if there are any up. And the quicker you get out of phase 3, the easier. So now, this is the phase 1 bridge all over again, where there's stun traps and knockback traps. So again, I'm going to be jumping through all these traps, and we're going to uh, get rid of the knockback traps as well. So pop those three with one jump, hit the knockback. Hit one more knockback. And I try not to go for two stacks, just to be safe. Jump over these three bombs again. Now, I saw this bomb going, and this bomb will slow you if you get hit. Um, I knew this was going to happen, but I did it anyways. Because what? I'm going to call for is a blessing of freedom. Do you get rid of the slow? So you're going to see it right here. There's blessing of freedom. We're going to pop the rest of these bombs uh, I can hit that stun trap by the way if you notice sometimes when you jump over stun traps I haven't figured out the exact like precision but sometimes you just don't get stunned I think if you're far enough away when you jump and you land far enough away you don't get stunned so I'm gonna interrupt here now this is uh, platform 4, this is an easy platform. Um, basically is a sever and a dodge uh, fire adds with charge beam. So do the charge beams identically, then just dodge the, uh, the bombs are falling. And switch to two severs. So this is an easy, easy platform. This is a DPS race, by the way. We hit the enraged timer like five times before we killed it because we lost too many people early. Uh, this attempt, um, we had everybody alive except we lost the Shadow Priest here in a little, little bit. And we beat it by 32 seconds or something like that. So this is a DPS race. We five healed it and two tanked it. So 20% is the last transition. So what we're going to do here is we're going to treat this like bridge 2. So we're going to wait for the uh, laser beams to go off. We're going to stack up. I'm going to call for cooldowns. And then the demon hunter is going to go crazy again. That's always great to watch. It's funny. And then we're just going to move. Uh, we lost the shadow priest there. Everybody else is alive. So now, uh, we just gotta kill him. This, this platform is easy, except you don't lose the debuff anymore, so you have a time limit. So we're gonna better as the Demon Hunter, and then 19 man with the rest of the 20% HP. Um, we switch at 4 stacks, because even if you die, you still shoot people with a debuff. So there's no point of you dying on purpose, because that's just a damage loss. So I take it for 4 stacks. And he's going to tank it for 4 stacks, knowing that I'm going to have all my defensive cooldowns up when I taunt again. So we still just have sleep canisters, falling meteors, and that's really it. And the shock lands. So, I should just pop meta right away, but I didn't. I'm gonna get chunked, and then, then I'm gonna hit, hit meta. I should just hit it right away. And there it is. So, that's the fight. Um, it's kind of frustrating, not gonna lie, when you're wiping on bridge because one or two people keep blowing people off the bridge. It's kind of annoying, but it's 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 a decent fight. It's, it's the first hard fight. So, um, I have a couple outtakes for you from a, d a couple different polls. We found them funny, so hopefully you do as well. And uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And thank you for watching. Five, four, three, two, one. Your heads will adorn my
Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two. 